Hey everyone, Professor Anik here, and today we're going to talk about a special type of member function in C++ classes called the constructor. The big idea behind a constructor is it's just a member function with a special purpose. It's going to get invoked automatically when you instantiate an instance of the class, and it's generally used to initialize the object in some way. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can do this and how we can write our constructor. So I'll go ahead and create a class that we'll name circle, and we'll simply have a private variable, member variable, that's a double for storing the radius. And then we'll have as part of our public interface, a mutator, which we'll call set, which will simply accept a double as an argument and set the private variable to that argument. And then we'll have a couple of accessors and the first accessor will simply return the value that's stored. We'll call it get, and we're simply going to return r. And then we'll have a member function of get area that will return an approximation for the area of the circle. Right now, if we were to instantiate, we haven't added the we haven't added the constructor yet. I just want to show you what would happen if we created an object of circle in memory. And then let's say that we decided to try to invoke the get method. What are we going to see? Here's a question. What are we going to see with this C out statement? And I'm going to tell you, it's not a trick question. The, the answer is, I don't know because we didn't initialize this R with anything. It's uninitialized. We have no idea what's there. There's something there because the, the, the answer is definitely not nothing, right? So you can see there's some garbage value that's located in that memory location, right? So that's generally bad. So what we want to do is we want to use this thing called a constructor that will automatically execute. So how do you create a constructor? You take the name of the class and you don't have a return type. Notice no return type for constructors, no return type for constructors, which is kind of weird, but it is what it is. And so then you have a couple of options with how you're going to use this thing. So if we wanted to initialize R to zero, then we could use an initialization statement like this. So when we instantiate the class, constructor is going to execute automatically. So you'll see, right, when I execute, this, you're going to see that even though I don't do anything else, that you're going to see that high there, right? Because it gets automatically executed. Now, if the high executed, then the R equals zero is going to execute as well. So interestingly, you're not required to write a constructor for your classes. You can leave them out. Now, if you do that, then C++ is going to automatically include one for you. It's a do nothing default constructor. So this is one way that we can initialize using the constructor. Another way, an alternative, is to use these things called member initialization lists. And the way you use these is after the header for the constructor, you put a colon, and then for every field that you want to initialize, you just use the name of the field, and then in parentheses, you put the value that you want to go there. And then the compiler is going to look at that zero, and it's going to assign it to R as soon as the circle is instantiated. So you're going to see that this is just an alternative way of doing it. And if you had multiple variables that you wanted to initialize, right? So let's say, um, I don't know, I had something for pi in here. Let's say that I did double pi. Then I could do the R, and then I could do the pi just like that. And so then maybe I want to use that instead down here. Okay. So that's going to work just fine. Okay. So you see there's the zero compiled and let's go ahead and call it the get area method. Let's set it to something. So let's do c.set 1.2 and then we'll do our get and then we'll do c.get area. Okay. And then you're going to see that it works just fine because we're going to calculate our area. All right, so you can see there's the area, 4.52389. So that's an alternative. Another thing you can do with later versions of C++ is you, you can do in place initialization. So this is something new, and this is something that you can now do in, you know, as of C++ 11, all right? So you could do something like that, and it works just fine. And even though you went ahead and initialized these variables, you can still put stuff inside a circle here, right? So you could still do something like, you know, hello world or whatever. Whatever, whatever code you need to execute is gonna go here. Whatever code needs to execute at instantiation time goes in here, okay? So you can do your initialization and you can you know, have whatever, whatever else code you want to have execute. Okay. So that would include not only, you know, initialization, but you know, if you needed to set up, say some dynamic memory allocation, so you could do something like, um, let's say that I wanted to do, so for whatever reason I wanted to dynamically allocate an integer, then I could initialize R to 
zero. I could do my pi equals 3.14159 thing again, and I could do p equals new int. Okay, so I could do all these things because all of these statements are going to execute, okay? Now you can combine, you can mix and match these things. So I could even use that member initialization list here. I could say um, R 0, 0.0 and then pi 3.14159, all right? And that's gonna run just fine, okay? And I could even do something crazy like this. I could say P and then put inside those parentheses new int, and then I could get rid of this assignment statement altogether and it's still gonna work just fine. So you have options. And then one last example here, you know, you could do a combination of all three. So maybe I'm gonna go ahead and do my dynamic memory allocation in here. And then um, I'll initialize pi by using this in place initialization up here, you know, and then I'll go ahead and leave R initialized using that member initialization list. Okay, fine. You know, it's just whatever you prefer to do based off of your preferences and your project requirements. So quick note here, this is an example of a default constructor. A default constructor is a constructor which accepts no arguments. Constructors themselves can have parameters, they can be declared in line, just like other types of member functions. It's just that a constructor has this special role. It gets automatically executed and it's there to set up the object. Finally, we'll take a look at what happens when you dynamically allocate a circle. Use dynamic memory allocation to create that circle object. So if I was to do something like this, new circle, this would dynamically allocate a circle object. Now it's kind of pointless because the memory address for the circle, I didn't put it anywhere, but you can do it. And you'll see that the constructor is going to execute just the same. So I'll put in here, I'm the constructor. So when I compile and run this, you're gonna see that the act of you know doing new circle, that expression is going to create a new circle in memory. It's gonna dynamically allocate it. So normally we would do something like this, right? We're not gonna just do new circle and not assign its memory address to a pointer. But the point is, is that this part right here is what creates the thing in memory. In this case, the thing in memory is a circle object. And so that circle object is gonna have its constructor execute automatically. So we can then go ahead and invoke its method so we can do the set and we'll set it to 1.1 again and then we'll just see out the area or this circle and we'll test it to make sure that it works all right there you go so you can see here that we did some dynamic memory allocation in our constructor and this is actually kind of bad because we didn't deallocate it anywhere we didn't free up that memory this is causing a memory leak in future video we'll take a look at this thing called the destructor which is the opposite of a constructor where we will delete that memory and we'll also look at additional ways that you can use the constructor Okay, so now you know how to add constructors to your classes in C++.